about a rodent infestation. We're actually talking about behind the wheel, believe it or not. <laughs> Driving, this is a story we just can't get enough of. It's not something you see every day, that's for sure. Sarah Shackles on your set at six, taking us inside a lab at the University of Richmond, where rats are helping researchers better understand human behavior. While it certainly doesn't look like it from the outside, neuroscientists say we actually share a lot of similarities with rodents on the inside, especially when it comes to matters of the mind. Green means go, and these rats love revving their engines at the University of Richmond's Gottwald Center for the Sciences. So these are our new driving students. They're two females, and they don't know how to drive yet. So new that they didn't even have names yet. I think Thelma and Louise. That's it. Behavioral neuroscience professor Dr. Kelly Lambert began teaching rats to drive six years ago while studying how their brains respond to certain stimuli. They were giving us clues that they liked it. We just take them to the lab, and they jump in the car. We share all the same brain areas, the neurochemicals. If I'm looking at a cell of a brain called a neuron from a human or a rat under the microscope, I can't tell the difference. Her research initially focused on depression and anxiety, but she says that changed to a more joy-filled approach during the pandemic. After noticing that the rats appeared excited to see her and even more excited to drive. By going out of their way to drive, they're increasing the anticipation time. And we know from other labs that when you're looking forward to something, those neurochemicals that are associated with that, such as dopamine, start to increase. Not when you're doing the thing you're looking forward to, it does increase then, but as you're thinking about it and anticipating, the more feel-good uh, kind of neurochemicals you can have. Their reward at the end, Fruit Loops. There's a lot we can learn from looking at these different emotions and these animal models and then cautiously and carefully um, translating to humans. Dr. Lambert tells me she's also branching out her research to look more at the brain behaviors of wild rats. She's also looked at other wild animals, including raccoons, which she says are actually very smart. At the University of Richmond, Sarah Shackles, 12 on your side. Thank you, Sarah.